We recently had an ejection charge explode inside the rocket, ultimately resulting in the rocket crashing. Today we're going to take a look at what went wrong with the ejection charge, we're going to look at a couple of ways to improve the design, and we'll build our new improved ejection charge. This is the top section of the rocket that crashed. Now, most of the damage you see here was caused by the rocket crashing into the ground, but up here where the ejection charge was located, you see the cardboard tube is kind of blown out. That's where a large chunk of the ejection charge cap exploded out through the rocket. It managed to trap the parachute inside the rocket, and so it just came down and crashed. Now to understand what went wrong with this ejection charge, let's take a quick look at how it's built. We start off with a half inch CPVC plastic plumbing cap. We install a screw through that just so we can mount it to the electronics bay. An electric igniter is glued into the cap with a little dab of hot melt glue. And then some black powder is placed into the cap. The black powder is sealed in place with hot melt glue. Now when the black powder explodes, the weakest part of the enclosure is going to be what blows out, and we want that to be the hot melt glue. But clearly that wasn't the case with this one. Now there's two possibilities of what went wrong here. It could be that there was just too much hot melt glue applied, and the hot melt glue was stronger than the plastic casing, causing the casing to explode. It's also possible that the casing may have already been damaged from a previous ejection charge. You see, we reuse these plastic caps over and over again, so if it got a little stress fracture in it from a previous ejection, well then it could have easily exploded. But either way, there's really two solutions that I see. Number one, either we need to make the membrane that's installed over the black powder weaker so that it blows out easily, or, number two, we need to make the cap stronger. I decided to start out by trying to make the membrane over the black powder weaker. So instead of sealing the black powder in with hot melt glue, I just sealed it in with ordinary white glue. Well, on the very first ground test, I discovered there was a problem. Here's that test. White glue ejection charge in three, two, one. Well, you see, it did eject the nose cone, but it was a pretty lazy ejection. There was enough black powder in there that that should have been a very powerful ejection charge. So what seems to be happening is that if the black powder is not really held very well in an enclosed space, it doesn't provide that explosive burst of power. And the white glue simply broke apart basically instantly, and the black powder didn't have a chance to actually explode. Instead of it just kind of went and the nose cone popped off. So if we can't make the membrane over the black powder weaker, then we need to make the cap stronger. And I've got a couple of choices here. First thing I purchased was a half inch copper plumbing cap. Now this is very similar in size to the cap that we're already using in plastic, but obviously metal is going to be a little bit stronger. Now the only thing I don't like about this cap is that it has a rounded bottom. And I don't think that's going to have any effect on the ejection charge and the functionality, but we do mount a screw through here so we can attach this to our electronics bay. And I just think that if we put the screw through here on the rounded end, the screw just won't get a good sandwiched fit onto the bottom of the cap. So that's the only problem I have with that one. So I continued shopping and I found a half inch copper plumbing plug. Now the plug is a little bit smaller than the cap because the cap is made to go over a half inch copper pipe and the plug is made to go into a half inch copper pipe. And the bottom of this plug is perfectly flat. So that's gonna make it very nice for attaching the screw. Now the other option I thought of was to use a bullet casing. This is a 45 caliber bullet case, which is very close to 12 millimeters, but any large caliber bullet case like this would probably work fine. Now, the nice thing about the bullet case is that it's brass, which is stronger than copper, although it's much thinner than these copper plumbing parts. So ultimately, I don't really know which one is actually gonna be stronger. I've decided to go with the half inch copper plug. So let's build a new improved ejection charge. 
First, I need to attach a screw to the copper cap, so I'll take this out to the shop and drill a hole in the bottom. Here's the hole. I'll insert the screw and secure it with a nut. Now, you may not need to drill the hole and install the screw if your ejection charge is held in place a different way. This is just the way we do it so we can secure the ejection charge to the electronics bay. I'll tighten this really tight because we won't ever be removing the screw. Then we need an electric igniter. These usually come with some type of plastic fitting or cap on the end. We don't want the cap, so I'll just remove it. I'm going to use this cap in just a moment, so I'll set it aside for now. Before installing the igniter, I'll test it using my digital multimeter. I'll set it on ohms and check the resistance across the wires. These usually have a resistance of around 1.2 to 1.6 ohms. I'll secure the igniter into the copper cap using a little bit of hot melt glue. Place the igniter onto the inside edge of the cap with the tip of the igniter against the bottom of the cap, and then hold this in place for a moment until the glue hardens. You'll need a way to measure a small quantity of black powder. I use the plastic cap that comes on the igniter. I've sealed closed the tiny opening at one end and it makes a nice little measuring cup. If your igniter didn't have this type of cap, you'll need some other way to measure the black powder. I'm using 4F black powder. If you find this product difficult to find locally, you could also try using smokeless bullet reloading powder. I've never used that product, but I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work well. I'm going to put in two scoops of black powder. The amount of powder needed depends on your specific rocket design. The best way to determine the proper amount needed is to build an ejection charge and ground test it in your rocket to be sure the nose cone ejects well. Here's a good view of the powder inside the cap. And then I'll apply a thin layer of hot melt glue on top of the powder to seal it in place. Be sure to wear safety glasses when working with any explosive powder. Once the hot melt glue has had a little time to harden, I like to tip this upside down and tap it over a white piece of paper. If you see any grains of black powder coming out, that means that there's a small hole that you need to reseal with the hot melt glue. But this one looks good. It's ready to go. So let's go test it. Copper plug ejection charge. Three, two, one. Well, that was a good, powerful ejection, and the copper piece looks perfectly fine. This is ready to be used again. I'm really confident that this can withstand a real powerful blast much better than the plastic cap. So moving forward, this is definitely the way I'm going to be building all my ejection charges. Hey, don't forget to check out the full line of rotary rocketry t-shirts and hoodies. There's a link to our shop down in the description. And if you like this video, hit that like button. We really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.